Hello everybody, welcome to yet another video brought to you by the website Tecmo Bowl vs. RBI Baseball. Uh, my name is Brad, joined, yeah. joined by my friend Nate today. Okay. Go ahead, sorry. Let's screw that up. Whatever. Okay, let's just do it over, whatever. My bad, dude. Hello everybody, welcome to yet another video brought to you by the website Tecmo Bowl vs. RBI Baseball. My name is Brad. And as always, I'm uh, his humble partner, Nate, and uh, it's good to be with you guys as we uh, go through with the New York Giants, kind of going to talk about the who's and what's and what for's and the why's and the, what makes them tick and all that jazz. So going to do some uh, video representing uh, tonight about just kind of what makes them as awesome as they are. Yeah, we're going to talk a little strategy, kind of show the ins and outs of their team. Um, we rank the New York Giants out of the 12 teams in Tech Mobile as the best team in the game. Um, uh, San Francisco, we rank second, but it's kind of a 1A, 1B. Um, I consider New York, San Francisco a toss-up. Nate might actually give San Francisco a small edge. Depending upon who's uh, playing with them, obviously, but um, I think if the human players are of equal caliber, that the Niners have just just a slight edge, and, and mainly that's because of their offensive firepower, uh, which far su surpasses the Giants. They have the offense to uh, drive at will, and uh, well, not at will, but they have the offense to drive and uh, have multiple shots at the end zone against the Giants. So, uh, The main difference between the two teams is we feel against the, the rest of the field, the Giants hold an edge, uh, a little greater edge than San Francisco would as playing the other 10 teams. So. So what we're doing today, uh, just going to start breaking down the Giants here. Um, first off is the Giants kick returner, Phil McConkie. One of the more lackluster... You can kick off. Dude. One of the more uh, lackluster kick returners in the game. And by that he means he's slow. Uh, let's not mince words. He is not a fast guy. Um, their blocking isn't all that powerful either. Uh, it doesn't seem to be so. Yeah, they don't nothing have nothing special on the kick return unit. They don't have like a, a strong, powerful uh, offensive lineman to, to pave the way. They're one of those teams that if McConkey gets the ball back to like the 30, 35 yard line, you're feeling really, really good with that kick return if you're the Giants. Well, here's the Giants playbook. Uh, you have a couple runs, uh, pass one and pass two. The focal point of the offense are, are pretty much the, the prime play. Um, that works the best for the Giants is pass two. Um, so on this play, we're going to just show what pass two can do. Nate's just going to call run two, and it's going to be a free-for-all for me. And Nate's going to be... I'll be Dwayne Board. All right, so in this situation, I'm going to drop back to pass. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let everything develop, throw underneath Bavaro. Big gain there. Um... Once Bavaro catches the ball, he's got really good kind of agility to kind of juke and work his way down quickly. He has kind of a nice little burst after he catches the ball. So um, if he catches that ball, you know, at, you know, seven yards deep, um, that usually is going to end up being a first down unless you're hovering just off screen. And if you're hovering just off screen, hopefully you saw as we're going to try that again and do that one more time. As you see here... Um, when the play starts, the two wide receivers go deep down the middle of the screen, and or in this case, they're at the lower half of the screen, and they go deep there, and really... I don't know what I was supposed to do there. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's start over. Um, I was going to do run two, and you were going to do pass two again, so I could show that they're going down, the oh, two okay. wide receivers. I was going to discuss how they're going off screen which means you have to kind of go cover them. Okay. So you got that little dump off. Like, the way you were leading into it, I was expecting, like, you were going to come back on screen and I was going to throw over the top. So. I gotcha. So that's, that was what I saw. I was, like, kind of waiting and hanging out. And I gotcha. Like, okay. So we have some problems with describing this. So. No, not really. And, like, you know what I can also do is, like, I wonder if I can get up here and I can illustrate, you know, this guy's going to go deep. This guy's going to go waggle off screen. And then... So you're kind of left covering those guys off field. So I think I could do some hand motions right. too. So. Sounds good. All right. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna recycle that, and I'm gonna call run two again, and Brad's gonna do pass two for you again. 
And again, this is the Giants' main pass play. And, and how it works here is this receiver is going to go deep downfield, so the defender has to key on this guy and, and, and kind of go deep with him. Um, this guy runs a little waggle just off screen. So what it gets to do is the human control defender goes off screen, and then that's where Mark Bavaro gets to do his damage out in the open. The Giants receivers are at three different levels uh, of the field, three different heights on the screen, and so that this is why that little dump off that we showed you the play before is really devastating. As you can see here, I'm going to be Dwayne Board again, and as Brad hikes the ball, we're gonna you'll see the two wide receivers go off screen, and that means that you're either covering one of those guys deep or you're picking up here to get Bavaro down short. Um, again, Bavaro has really good agility once he catches the ball. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to do that same play, and we're going to show you how dangerous it is to key up on Bavaro as Brad's going to show you what it's like to throw deep over the top there. So, yeah, Nate's going to he, uh, gonna kind of try to cheat up on Okay. Okay, you could have cheated up a little sooner. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. We throw totally. Me, why don't you throw me a pick and I'll just okay. throw it back to you? Well, it's fourth and just do it. Okay. Let's just run the play here. Just go off screen and then come back. I think I called the wrong play. I'm going to you. I'm a jerk face. <laughs> this is harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> it's it's well, fine, dude. What should be, like, super easy is, like, Dude, it's fine. I mean, you, you knew we were gonna have to cut it, so yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. By cut it, like I'm gonna have to get the chainsaw out. You know what? So what? Okay. okay. All right. So what you're gonna see here again is I'm gonna call run two. Brad's gonna do that pass two play again, the main play for the Giants. And this time, as he goes, his two wide receivers go off screen. I'm gonna try and sneak up and kind of just hover just off the screen at the bottom and try and go for a pick on the tight end Bavaro and this is what makes this play dangerous when you try and do that all right I'm locked in on Bavaro I'm waiting I'm waiting I'm waiting and he ah. tried to cheat up through right I was waiting for it one simple click of the button I'm on the the deep receiver and big gain um, so that kind of just shows the different things you can do with pass two uh, pass one we're going to show here is uh, not as advantageous And all this is is three curls. So um, if I sit back here and I don't make a decision early, everybody ends up getting in the same area in a, in a closed quarters there. When you have a three curls, uh, there's a lot of teams that have this kind of pass play, this pass one play where uh, three of their guys are curling. And as Brad said, if you don't make a decision early and throw the ball early, if you notice as he hikes the ball here, um, two of his guys immediately are open, but he needs to quickly make a decision. Otherwise, it gives my defender time to get down and get into a place where uh, he can make a play on any of the guys he passes it to. So there, just a quick cycle and pass for a bit, you know a good game. But on that play, you have to make a quick decision. Should we do a little computer control coverage now? Oh yeah, that sounds good. And pause this while we're digging it up. Let's get it ready. Okay, now we're going to show how a, a strategy is employed, and it's called computer control. Com, it's called computer controlled coverage. Um, the premise of it's pretty simple. When the offense calls a pass play, and the defense calls you know the wrong pass play uh, the game still gives them a, re a reward and the game uh, designates one defender that's going to cover a receiver so what we do is we like to eliminate the opponents uh, the offense's best pass play and hopefully with the computer control coverage you can kind of funnel the offense into having you know less uh, targets across the field so what Nate's going to do here is he's going to call a pass two. This, this pass play has to be stopped. And in doing so, 
Uh, this receiver on pass one is going to be covered, and he's going to be covered by the bottom outside linebacker. So all Nate has to do with his defender is, you know, he's going to be Dwayne Board here, and he just has to cover this curling receiver and this receiver because this guy here is covered. He's covered by the computer. So he only has a small window of which he's got to cover. And if you notice, they both kind of curl into each other. I mean, I know they're a distance away, but they're curling inside instead of outside and so um, it's a lot easier to cover with any sort of defender. Yeah and, and if I still had all three targets open like we showed a little while ago um, all I'd have to do is cycle down to this guy throw to him and Nate still up here or if Nate was down here I could throw here so getting this guy taken out of the equation is is key and then as we said eliminating this play altogether. so we're going to show how the computer control coverage works here is I'm going to have a small window to try and throw into and I got to make a quick pass there um, it was completed but you know I had to I had to you know thread the needle in a tight little window there and again for purposes of the display you know I'm using Dwayne Board usually when I play with the Niners on defense there I would be Michael Carter who is quite a bit faster and that makes that an even more difficult pass certainly or if he was Ronnie Lott right. um, now once in a while, like you can't call pass two all game long though. That's the problem is you got to mix it up. So if Nate decides that he wants to call this pass play, um, he's going to get some coverage on pass two. And again, it's the bottom wide receiver for the Giants that's covered, and, and again by my bottom outside linebacker. Um, the problem with that though is you're still going to have Bavaro right here uh, running that out route. And you're still going to have this guy off screen, so the defender can't cover both. But we'll, we'll show, you know, we'll still show what the look is here. And the difficulty in covering that again is that you have two wide receivers at two different levels on the screen, and two different heights, so uh, on the television screen. So it really makes it difficult to cover. Sorry. There we go. And there's the bottom receiver. He's covered. Now I have to make a choice. I'm either going to go deep, or I'm going to go to Bavaro. Yeah. And Either way, I'm kind of stuck in no man's land there. Yeah, he, he can't cover both. So uh, he, his best bet is to just kind of cover the, the deeper of the two up top and let me get my yards to Bavaro. So. It's interesting because a lot of times in Tecmo Bowl, when you call the wrong pass play and you don't get a play pick on second or third down, it's interesting because a lot of times in Tecmo Bowl, when you call the wrong pass play and uh, you don't get a play pick on second or third down. What you find yourself doing is trying to limit the damage, um, as far as uh, how much, how many passing yards you're going to get. So you always want to kind of go cover the deep guy. Okay. Um, Do you think of the runs? Uh, runs are actually, and we'll show the the line. Let's show um, how like the, like the strong side run work, like the backside defenders. Okay. So. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually teach you guys a little bit about run defense strategy. Um, Nate's going to call run one. I'm going to call run two. Uh, run two goes to the bottom of the screen. Now there's three defenders that are not going to be blocked on run two. And those defenders are the top defensive end, uh, the top outside linebacker, and the top defensive back. And the reason they're not blocked on a run play down here, I have assumed because they're like the backside defenders or that's the backside of the blocking scheme. So this guy can come down, this guy can come down, this guy can come down, make the tackle, not get blocked. Okay. Honey, honey, we're recording. You walked in front of the thing while we were in the middle of speaking. There's a picture right there recording the camera. Honey, I need you to go upstairs or on the porch. I love you. Goodbye. All right, so Nate's going to be Dwayne Board. Just going to slide down the line. Um, minimal gain. Got two yards on that play. Um, and Dwayne Board's not a you know hugely fast defender, but just the position of where he's at on the screen and the fact that I had called run one, which is the top run up by where he would be, um, and the fact that he's unblocked means that he's going to be able to limit the damage. So. Certainly. Um, now what do we want to break out? Um, and then let's show that, well, no, nah, we don't really need to do. 
What we could do is... Oh, we could show, like, what happens if if you're bored and, and I run at you. Right. Okay. So we kind of showed what happens when the offense runs to the opposite field, or opposite side of your defender. Let's show what happens when I run at Nate's defender. He's going to have to try to avoid a block, run one. Um, and here, okay... My bad, I screwed up what you're doing. Okay. I'm supposed to call run two there. Right? Uh, or just pick a pass play or whatever. Just something, okay. anything but yeah, running. Yeah, I'll call pass play. Right. All right, so here's Nate. Is Dwayne Board going to try to defend run? Uh, he's going to try to defend this play. It's coming at him. He got blocked. Spring it open. That Kind of got a little help from my defense. but Yeah, definitely. Ronnie Lott uh, is an exemplary player. Is that even a word? It is now. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, why don't I get you back the ball and I'll be Ronnie Lott and we'll do that same thing. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Alright, let's just. I think, like, part of our problem is, like, we don't really, like, know the direction we're heading. We're just kind of doing things. Correct. So. Which is very weird for a Brad Bell production, can I tell you? Yeah. Almost like I thought this would be like the easy way to get our, our, our brains going, but it's like I think it's confusing us <laughs> more than anything. <laughs> all right. So I'm like, all right. So here we're gonna show what happens um, if Nate in San Francisco's defense does not call run one, and we run at him. It's gonna be Ronnie Lott gets blocked. Nice gain for Joe Morris there. Um, still, you know, we probably should have showed that first and then went back to. Why don't you um, run all the way to the top against Lot and I'll run into your blocker. Okay. What we're going to show you here is um, we showed you before what happens if we run towards uh, the defender when we've called the run up to his direction. Um, what we're going to show you now is what happens when you run against a defender when you don't call the run play up there on defense. Ah. ah, get him! Get him! What happens is the halfback breaks it for a long run is usually what occurs unless you get a lot of help on defense. Um, notice that Brad's blocker came right after me. And we'll Sorry. Yeah. All right. Let me regroup on this here. Yeah.